Necessity may be the mother of invention, but the father is creativity. All of us as human beings are creative. We want to create something. And this allows the avenue to do that, to share it with folks. And it's, it's global and it's taken off because of that, the internet being the medium of communication. What's taking off is the maker movement. People have been making things since there have been people, of course. But what makes this different is technology. With a click of a mouse, people can use the internet to communicate, to collaborate, and to share their invention. Now this quad right here is the hovership um, that was featured recently in the Make magazine. Um, however, um, the person who produced this originally released the files online publicly. Where did the parts come from? So now the parts from this frame, like I said, we downloaded the files. However, they were printed right here in metric at NC State on our 3D printers here. So, And the real fun part about it is you learn as you go with this process. Um, when you want to know something else about how to control the board or program the board, you search online and you use that online community. That online community is big and getting bigger. It starts with a maker space. They're also nicknamed hacker space or even hack lab. They often have 3D printers, but they don't have to. They just need stuff to make things with. That can be paper. Arts and crafts are sewing supplies. Some hacker spaces are community run. This one is in the library of North Carolina State University's Department of Education where they're training future teachers how to incorporate this innovative movement into the classroom. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> what we do is, for this project, was try and find the least expensive way of building a functional robot. So we're provided some electronics, which are very simple and kind of geared for what we would actually take into a elementary or middle school classroom. And we would be able to challenge the, our students to go ahead and build the robot. So in this case, we uh, used a lot of uh, cardboard, duct tape, and <laughs> unexpected failures to um, get it to work. <laughs> so the idea was have the dog go ahead, sit down, okay. wag his uh, tongue and tail, and uh, can do a little bit of walking, but he'll kind of want to flip himself over first. <laughs> but the ultimate goal is inspiring school children to want to learn how to make the robot which just so happens to require learning things like math and physics. I see it as part of the curriculum. I, when, we, when you look at Maker Ed, it shouldn't change the way you teach in our classroom. It's changing the output that the student does. Stephen says this movement is the way to reconnect learning with making. Don't teach in a vacuum. Find something students want to make, then teach them the skills they need to make it. This is one of our favorite pieces that we use. They all know the Ferris wheel. If you look at mathematics, the, fer the circle represents so many different items. They can do fractions in elementary school, but on a higher school level, all of a sudden we start looking at the unit circle and how that relates. Scale is so important in getting this together because this wheel can't be printed on like a standard 3D printer, so we had to scale it down. We had to scale all the houses down but also, and then do the hot glue, so you're doing the hand building, as well as then it ties it back to the mathematics. Education students say this hands-on learning is something they can't <laughs> wait to do as teachers. Learning through doing, it's the best kind of education. Like, it's better understanding when we are doing things with our hands and our minds, and get the result in front of us, it's really wonderful experience. And educators say this maker movement does something else. It encourages students to take ownership of their education. I find that students have a, when it's real world, they will take it and they take that ownership and I can't stop them. <laughs> they will take it farther than I could even begin to imagine. But what if you don't have a 3D printer? Well, there are organizations that often donate them to schools. And educators say a bit of school spirit can work wonders. We also use what we call the power of $10. So if each family were to donate $10 to the school, I mean, just imagine what you can do. Um, and the schools that we've bought 3D printers in, we have bought it a 3D printer in one night. Two weeks later, they've had it, and then we are actually printing things. And Stephen says 3D printers run on steam. 
science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So you could build a talking robot to encourage reading. <laughs> In the 2013-2014 school year, nearly 11,000 North Carolina students dropped out of school. The good news is that number has been falling the last few years. And maker movement proponents say giving students a real life reason to learn could go a long way toward keeping even more of them in the classroom. Sciences, mathematics, programming, physics, all of these fields that I have experience and know that these kids are frustrated with them and getting tired of it and or it's just not connecting. But as soon as you can get them to actually play around with it and they 3D print something, oh, this is how the math works. This is how yeah. I need to pay attention in chemistry. This is why I need to pay attention in physics. And I've seen it firsthand, and this is why I'm going into education. And proponents say it also works for discipline issues by encouraging good behavior in exchange for getting to work with the 3D printer. We have actually decreased the behavior problems in the school by adding a 3D printing into that, into that other part that's not actually part of the curriculum, but it is an inter integral piece to the way the classroom works because it keeps it smoother. And when students want to learn, teaching becomes much more fulfilling. It is a wonderful experience for me. And the good things are also like sharing our experience. We are sharing what kind of obstacles we, we, we faced in order to let other students learn from that. So this high-flying maker movement is really about redefining necessity as the mother of invention. Let students explore their creativity and when they're inspired to make things, they'll learn the necessary skills, not because they have to, but because they want to. They, they'll come with, you know, how can I create something such as a device that people with arthritis that can carry a bag of groceries so it doesn't hurt so much. I'm looking for the student who's gonna create or cure cancer in the future. And that student is gonna be the one who puts it all together. And they say, oh, I could do this, I could do that, and I can see how these, all these, these, not, these different pieces of knowledge intertwine. that benefit others, they've made something else, a legacy to be proud of. It's so exhilarating to see what the students can do. They always surpass what I expect.